In this short video, I'd like to demonstrate that significant process knowledge can be obtained pretty easily by visualizing seeding mechanisms during crystallization development. The seeding step during crystallization uh, is an important one. Seed crystals are added to the crystallization process in the metastable zone width in order to help induce uh, nucleation. There are a number of variables that can be adjusted during seeding in order to produce different results. These can include the size of the seeds used, the shape of the seeds, the mass of seed added, the seed loading, and indeed the polymorphic form of the seed chosen for a crystallization process where the polymorphic form needs to be controlled. Uh, really, seeds are added for two reasons. The first might be to ensure that the crystallization uh, starts at the same temperature or concentration for every experiment or every batch. This can really help with consistency and repeatability for the crystallization process. The next reason that seeds might be added in addition to this would be to provide surface area in the crystallizer to drive kinetics in favor of either growth or nucleation. Uh, and in order to optimize the seeding step, uh, visualizing the seeding event itself can really help provide significant process knowledge that can support optimization. So there's two examples where we'll actually directly visualize uh, the seeding step for two different crystallizations. In the first case study, we'll look at how secondary nucleation can occur during seeding. And in the second case study, we'll actually look at sea crystals agglomerating and the impact that can have on the process. In our first example, compound A is crystallized at a one liter scale in an Optimax uh, reactor. Uh, and particle view with PVM technology is used to visualize the crystallization process using real-time microscopy. This is a seeded crystallization, obviously, followed by an anti-solvent addition. So here we see one of our first real-time microscopy images collected using particle view, and we can actually see what the seed looks like uh, from a microscopic perspective directly in the process. This is how seeds actually are existing in the process itself, rather than what they might look like after sampling and preparation for uh, visualization under an offline microscope. So what we can see is the seeds are added to the crystallizer, they form these loosely bound flocks. Over time these loosely bound flocks appear to kind of form more densely formed uh, aggregates or agglomerates and then after seven minutes we really begin to see the direction this crystallization process is going to take. The seed crystals have agglomerated uh, or aggregated, and now what we're seeing what is what appears to be surface nucleation with small needle-shaped crystals growing out from the center of these seed aggregates. Dendritic growth uh, may be a word that you could apply in this case. After 10 minutes, we begin to see these seed aggregates have grown even more, but now what we're beginning to see is these small needle-shaped uh, crystals are really beginning to grow from the aggregates and are actually beginning to shear off into the crystallizer itself. And this is the beginning of a secondary nucleation event. Uh, and this occurs, as can be seen from the timestamp, at about 10 minutes. Now, if we look later in the process after 30 minutes, you can see we've actually ended up with a highly bimodal system where we have the seed aggregates, large seed aggregates in the background, uh, combined with a very high quantity of small needle-shaped crystals which have been formed due to the secondary nucleation event. Uh, and really what this means is this product is difficult to filter and handle uh, due to the bimodal properties. Uh, and then secondly, the root cause of this poor process quality and product quality can directly be attributed to the seed itself. So the process knowledge that's obtained here by visualizing the seeding step is very important because now an optimization is possible. Clearly, to avoid this secondary nucleation event and this bimodal result, the seeding step must be characterized in more detail and improved in order to improve the process and the product itself. So in our next example, we'll actually visualize seed agglomeration. So in this case, we actually used uh, two technologies, particle track and particle view in an EasyMax uh, reactor. Uh, and this is actually looking at a seeded crystallization where there is an isothermal hold for 60 minutes. 
And three experiments were conducted with different seed loadings. The first was actually an unseeded crystallization process, so 0% seed, followed by a seed loading of 0.1% and 2%. And really what we're trying to do here is study the effect of seed loading on the crystallization mechanism itself, but then also the final crystal size. So what we can see for the unseeded crystallization is that after five minutes, we begin to see the crystals forming. After 10 minutes, you can see they've actually grown quite a lot. And then after 45 minutes, you can actually see they, they appear to have broken apart quite a bit and are actually much smaller. So what's happening here for the unseeded crystallization is really a two-step process. The first is agglomeration and growth of those initial crystals, followed by the breakage of those aggregates or agglomerates into a much finer crystal suspension. So the question in this case was if seeding would actually help avoid this intermediate agglomeration step. So at the bottom here, we have our unseeded crystallization process and what that looks like as time progresses. And then as we increase seed loading, we can actually begin to see differences in the mechanisms that occur during crystallization. So what's apparent from this set of images is that agglomeration occurs every time regardless of the seed loading used. But the visualization here really helps us understand that this agglomeration step has occurred. And we can also see qualitative differences in what the crystallization looks like with these real-time microscopy images. Now, if we look at the 2% seed crystallization process, and we look at our particle track data, which is actually tracking the rate and degree of change to particle size and count in process, we can begin to uh, obtain more quantitative information about what's happening during this seeding step. So we can see the point at which seed is added, right here around 35 minutes, uh, and then what we begin to see is these very large counts increase, indicating this agglomeration step right up to about 50 minutes. And then those large counts, the orange trend, begin to decrease. And then the smaller counts between 0 and 50 microns increase before we reach a steady state at around 1 hour or 1 hour and 5 minutes. What's really important here to show is that the dynamics of this process around seeding, there really is a significant agglomeration and breakage event that occurs. And it's important to understand this as this crystallization process gets developed and ultimately scaled up. Next, we can look at the three crystallization processes uh, in a slightly different uh, data representation, looking in three dimensions. So here we're using what's essentially a waterfall plot to study our cord length distributions measured by particle track and how they evolve over time. So essentially what we're looking at here is a heat map indicates the, um, the particle counts in different size ranges and then vertically we're progressing uh, over time here. So what we see is that for the unseeded crystallization process we get nucleation followed by breakage. It's the same for the seeded processes but there's less breakage that occurs when we use 2% seed. Also, when we have an unseeded process, we actually start off with quite large particles initially. For the 0.1% seed, they start off you know, smaller, and then for the 2% seed, they actually start a lot smaller uh, than that even again. However, the end point for each of these is reversed. So when we have the unseeded process, we actually end up with small particles, but for the 2% seed, we end, end up with the largest uh, crystals uh, for all three experiments conducted. So what we conclude from this is that increase in the seed loading reduces the agglomerate size that's formed and potentially increases the agglomerate strength. Maybe the binding of these agglomerates is stronger, meaning that the mixing inside the crystallizer is less able to break them apart. So what we've really determined here is that seed loading is a critical parameter to control the crystallization and potentially the final particle size, especially as mixing conditions change if the strength of those agglomerates uh, is really influenced uh, by the seed loading chosen. So quickly to conclude, visualization of the seeding step during a crystallization process can really deliver significant process knowledge. We've shown that secondary nucleation and agglom agglomeration are common mechanisms that, that often occur during seeding. Uh, careful observation and control of mechanisms such as this can really help improve performance, uh, especially at scale. And then finally, just a couple of other uh, really useful seeding references that uh, may be interesting uh, to review. Thanks very much.